a Navy vet himself, Republican congressman from California. Mike Garcia joins me now. He is a Republican, and he's a good friend of this program. Congressman, great to see you. Grant, thanks for having me, and, and truly thank you for continuing to shine a bright light on this issue. This is something we can't forget, like you said. Well, it's amazing to me they want to bury this story, and there's many facets to it. We've got Americans stranded over there, and really the, the terror threat is real. Let's talk first about people stranded over there. What are you hearing any way we get them home? So uh, we're not hearing anything, actually, from the administration or the State Department. This is an issue that we've been working independently. A few uh, congressional offices, myself, Mike Waltz, Dan Crenshaw, Don Young, and a few others, have been working effectively clandestine operations to get Americans and, and SIV partners, as well as legal permanent residents, out of Afghanistan before the withdrawal date actually uh, was, was realized. Early August, we started these, uh, these operations with local operators. Uh, to date, our office has got 115 uh, human beings out, uh, out of harm's way, back either in the United States or our allied nations. Uh, some of those are American citizens, uh, uh, SIV partners, as well as uh, legal permanent residents. But the reality is, is there are literally tens of thousands of these folks still left there. Uh, and, and you can imagine folks like, uh, like, like myself and the other veterans who are pulling their hair out right now, watching the lies come out of the White House when they say that, uh, first of all, every American citizen that wants to get out will get out. Uh, and then start floating numbers that are that are a few dozen, maybe a couple of hundred, when we know there are literally thousands still over there. So, look, look, this is a hostage crisis, and we need to treat it as such. This is not a diplomatic mission. Uh, this isn't uh, something that's going to be solved by platitudes and niceties or appeasement to an, a terrorist organization. Yeah. We need to go in there, op give operational control to the Department of Defense rather than the State Department, and rescue these Americans. It's heartbreaking to watch, and there's are, there, yeah. there are ways to fix this. This president is just choosing not to. You know, it's amazing because as you spell it out, this should be the lead story on every newscast across America, and it should continue to be, but um, it's ignored. And I think one of the reasons it's ignored is because of the real terror threat. What do you make of the undersecretary of the Department of Defense saying that al-Qaeda is six to 12 months out from an attack on, on, on our interests? <laughs> this is absurd. I mean, we had a, a viable, incredible threat in Virginia from an ISIS cell just a couple of weeks ago, right? Uh, and imagine being the mother, the gold star family of the victims who were killed in that explosion that killed 13 military personnel, and hear this president and his administration say that ISIS-K does not represent a threat. Imagine being an, an Afghan refugee who has lost family in Afghanistan, not only to the Taliban, but also uh, to ISIS in the last uh, several months, and hear our president say that these guys don't represent or pose a threat to, to us or our allies. This is completely absurd. Uh, it's delusional. These are flat out lies. And the intel community is filled with some good people. But the leadership right now is is failing these good people. And they're translating the, the intelligence that they're getting into political lies in the interest of saving this president rather than saving American lives. Yeah, I I'm not being sensationalistic when I tell you Joe Biden and their ineptitude is going to get Americans killed. And that's the sad reality. I, right. I want to switch gears real quick because we've got a little bit of breaking news, Congressman. Uh, we have now pushing this massive spending bill a little bit closer to being passed. Another vote will be taken uh, tonight in the House of Representatives. The Congressional Budget Office came out and said it's going to add $367 billion to the deficit. Uh, it, it's, it says the revenue that will be generated is not nearly as much as this White House claims. What do you make of everything going on? Well, this is what it looks like, Grant. I mean, this is what uh, effectively two and a half to five trillion dollars or something along those lines look like. The, you know, so you, you imagine uh, how many how many months it would take to actually read this thing and understand where the money is going? We're in a position now as a nation where we've got the, close to thirty trillion dollars in debt. Uh, in the last year, we have spent eight point six trillion dollars in total spending between COVID appropriations, uh, the American Rescue Plan, uh, and now we're going to aggravate all of that with something that we don't even really know how much it costs. And we just learned today that it's it's going to be close to half a trillion dollars uh, added to our nation's debt. This is literally uh, politicians who don't understand the economy running with scissors. And this will be the bane of our nation. Uh, this is the single biggest domestic threat right now, our nation's debt. And these guys don't care. Yeah. Nope, they don't. Uh, we're going to have to rely on the Senate because this will pass through the House. And when you think about That's this, right. you know, we talk about uh, Joe Manchin and Kristen Cinema, but you know, you've got John Tester in Montana. Where is he on this? Montanans don't want this. You've got the Democrat senator from Maine. You've got New Hampshire. All these people should be saying no to this. We'll see what they do. Congressman Mike Garcia, as yeah. always, That's right. great to see you, my friend. Thank you for coming on tonight. Thanks, Grant. God bless. Thank you.